Good afternoon. I am just sketching a little bit until it is time to start. Hi, Nancy. Uh, a weekend, hmm, a weekend full of homework. <laughs> I, uh, it's finals week here for me, um, and I'm taking a research course. And I have about two and a half assignments due by next Thursday. Um, so those are kind of my plans. How about you? Anything exciting or fun planned? I am just working on a design that I uh, started a while ago with you guys. I have to apologize. My days are kind of running together. And uh, I just thought I'd work on it while we waited for some folks to join in. But I think it's about 4 o'clock now. So I can get started. Well, Nancy, doodling sounds like a really great weekend plan. I'm a little over um, halfway through my master's program. Just kind of taking one class a semester uh, because I work for the museum full time. I teach part time. I have a 10-year-old kiddo, and uh, that's about all I can <laughs> manage, but I'm hoping to be done next summer. As a matter of fact, that's, that's the game plan, but, you know, we'll see how that works. I hope I'm done next summer. If I have everything planned out right, I, I should be done then. All right, um, I have 402. So, hey, Kelly, I was just practicing um, a doodle <laughs> that I was that started here with you guys. Um, I'm gonna say last week, but kind of lost track of time these days. Um, I did, oh, I did want to show you the apple. Remember the apple that I started yesterday? with you guys. Um, I sketched it out quickly. Um, but I used two of the tangles we learned the other day. And, you know, we talked about shading to uh, add a little bit of depth. So that's what I did. Um, just, you know, a little bit of shading goes a long way. I really kind of like how this turned out. Um, and I'm looking forward to experimenting with it a little bit more. It took me a little while, you know, to sketch out, but I broke my apple into it's five sections. So here's one, two, three, four, and then five. Um, but I followed with, you know, a little bit of shading on the edges to make it look like it's curved. Same thing here. And this section, I gave my spears a little bit of a, a shadow. And with the lines, um, giving some shading where they overlap, uh, except for that first one. And then this was the, um, the I can't remember. I want to call it Kiko, but that's not it. Oh, that's it. Uh, giving the Kiko some shading where the ribbons would overlap. So, you know, have a little bit of fun with your designs and show me what you're creating. But I have three to share with you today and we will get right in. I hope my lighting is okay. I got a little extra light source right there. I see blue skies, a little bit of blue skies out my window. Um, so we are doing the Art of, I'll say, Zentangles. Uh, my name is Jess Campbell. I am your instructor for 
all intents and purposes. <laughs> and Zen tangling is just the art of drawing structured patterns to create beautiful artwork. Um, you know, it's meant to be therapeutic and relaxing, and I think we could all use a little bit of it during this time. So be sure to share your designs with me. I'm looking forward to seeing what you're creating while we're learning, learning some of these patterns. I was doodling a lot last night because I felt the need to relax and be creative. Okay, we're going to start with our border, as we always do. And I'm going to start my second one down here. Uh, we're going to do three patterns today. And the first one is called Pepper. I like this one. Uh, this reminds me of, oh shoot, um, <laughs> the one that I said looks like jellyfish that we did the other week. It'll come to me later. Darn it. I don't like when I do that. Um, so we're just drawing like an oval shaped or a, a foreshortened circle. Um, I Both of my dogs on my bed is my audience today. Um, <laughs> And they're right behind me. They're anxiously waiting dinner time, uh, as they do every day. So once we have our oval drawn, we're going to come up and kind of create a little triangle. Well, they're yawning too. They must be tired. So we're going to do this again. And if you uh, want to bring your point up a little higher you're welcome to um, and we're gonna keep going with this pattern sorry I usually use my bed behind me as a layout for all my stuff and I got a very hungry pug rummaging on my bed um, so we're gonna keep going with these and as you turn they don't all have to be perfect um, as a matter of fact maybe this one curves here as we're curving around okay Uh, simple as that. The only thing, I might make that one curve out a little bit more. Otherwise, it's okay. Now, you could do multiples of this in an area. You could do a part of one in an area. That could be fun. You could do it real big. And... I guess all the points, you kind of want them to aim towards the center. And you can have a little bit of fun, um, fun with this one. You know, maybe you put a little dot on the end um, when you're coloring it in. Just to give it a little bit of decoration. I've seen variations of this one. Uh, maybe do a smaller one. So yeah, I just I think the key for this one is is all the all the points are to go towards the center. But I don't think there's really you know any right or wrong way to do any of them. Um, but this one in particular. Um, so have a little fun. Enjoy it. Experiment like I was here. <laughs> so, I have a very sick puppy, guys. Sorry. He's my little shadow. He's not been feeling good this last few weeks, but... <laughs> I wonder if you can hear him breathing. 
Uh, he's a pug, so he has respiratory issues anyway. <laughs> but he is more concerned with his tummy than anything else at this moment. Um, so that's pepper. Again, you can do, you know, do various ways. And just like we were learning yesterday, I don't know if I want to say you're coloring all these in, shading them in. Uh, you know, this could be fun if you're doing it in multiple multiple colors um maybe you make rainbow ones Oop. get messages on my phone here um but you could also give yourself a little depth uh, and give yourself a little shadow uh, when we're typically shading spears um, or round objects uh, do we have time for a quick side lesson? I did this before. Uh, when you're doing anything spears, uh, anything circular, um, you know, I give yourself a light source. So we'll say my light source is there. And you want to give yourself like a C shape when you're shading. I'm going to do this in two minutes or less. Um, so your darkest is right along, your darkest shadow is right along the edge. And I'm just scribbling real quick. Um, and then you kind of get lighter as you go out. And I'm just scribbling because I can go in and, and shade this later. But just see how giving it depth. And then, because um, I have a spear, I don't want it floating. Uh, you know, you could give it a cast shadow. You don't have to do that when you're zentangling. But when you're adding um, some depth to your shapes, your darkest edge is always farthest away from the light. So that's why I always give myself a cheat sheet. Uh, and in lieu of my tortillion... I'll use my tissue um, to shade. So when you're shading your objects, you fade out. So making it real light. Something like that. So if you're doing that over here, um, it, mine's going to blend a little bit just because I use pencil. But this could be a really great exercise for when you use a marker or colored pencil. Um, as a matter of fact, let me grab one of my Micron pens. So I blended that a little bit and then I can go in with my markers, my Micron pens. I can make it really nice and clean. And that looks good. All right, side lesson for the day. Um, and there you have it. That's your lesson in drawing a spear. If you haven't joined us for that before, I think I did it one other time. Um, I just, I really like adding, you know, some dimension to our designs. It's just kind of gives it another level of interest. All right. So Yinks is our next one. When oh, I spelled that wrong, I've been looking at that wrong all the time. Um, Y-N-I-X. Hmm. So this is another organic one, um, more kind of leafy and similar to the flux design that we did a few, a few weeks ago, a little smaller. So we're drawing little leaves. I'm going to do these nice and light and they're certainly not going to be perfect, but... you can make them about the same size. Mine are looking a little thin. That's okay. Maybe we come out a little bit. Maybe I'll color that one in. I don't know. 
Um, ooh, that could be fun. See, I made that mistake, but if I color, maybe we color every other one in. I'm a sucker for black and white. Um, anyway, you don't have to do that. That's just a, I made a whoops. So, um, anyway, you can just keep coming up and then at the top, whenever you're done, um, there are no, like you have to do seven or eight leaves on each side. Hi, Jana. I'm glad you found us. Um, there are no, you know, amount of leaves that you have to do. Um, just when you get to the top, add so, add one um, to the top to kind of finish it off. And what they're showing is how we learned to add an aura, or I like to say halo, um, to our tangles. You can do that to this one. Uh, and then maybe, maybe we'll do another one here since I don't feel like I did you guys justice with that first round. Just leaf shapes, just kind of think ovals with a little point on the end. Um, and don't forget the one at the top. See, I made this one a little smaller. And then I'll go and add my aura around the side. And if you want to color them all in, you're welcome to. Uh, I'd love to see if you guys are experimenting with colored pencils. Um, but you could probably even do colored pencils. Uh, I have a fun experiment to show you guys when we're done. Colored pencils, crayon. Crayon, I think you just have to do a little bit bigger. Um, harder to get that fine detail, but but you could still have a little bit of fun with it. Okay. So this is my little organic design. But you could certainly fill up a space with that. Um, and if you wanted to add, you know, a little bit of shading, you could choose a side. And what you could do is give yourself a little shading towards the bottom of your leaves. I do have my tortillion today. Um, but you could blend it up a little bit if you wanted, or you don't have to add any shading at all. Um, the other thing that I like that I have seen is maybe a little bit of shading around the one, the edge, you know, one edge of your doodle there. And again, you could take a rolled up tissue. Or if you have a tortillion, um, you know, and you can give it a little bit of dimension that way as well. Okay, um, I will jump on to my third and final tangle, and I have a couple of things to share with you. Hopefully they're hopefully they're drying. <laughs> um, so how is everyone today? Good, I hope. I thank you for joining me. Um, we're going to draw our last um, border and I'm not giving myself any strings. Uh, strings are what you use to, you know, create a design or pattern um, and incorporate multiple tangles. So if you're new, um, I'll share an example. So here was one I did the other day. Um, I kind of gave myself a circular pattern and then uh, a crescent shape here. And uh, so in essence, I had a string here for this pattern. I had a string here for this one, another string here and another string for here. Or I could show you right here. Um, I divided our practice one yesterday into threes, but usually when you divide them, um, you do not show these strings when you're drawing them in. Just there is like a guideline um, to show you where that particular uh, Zentangle pattern will go. Okay, oh, that was two days ago. 
Um, our next, our final one, this one's called Squid. Uh, this is more like a, a floral shape. So we're going to start with a little tiny circle in the center if you choose to do so. Uh, and then I'm going to go and give myself about five to six circles uh, around. Um, think like the center of a flower. And then our next step, if you're all caught up, we're going to do a nice, fun little curvy line or petal, if you'd like. I think this one looks like a flower. And I think this one will curve up a little bit and then bring it back down to a point as you get closer to your center. So we're gonna do uh, four more, give ourselves six. So space them out evenly. So maybe I'll do one, two, three, and three. <laughs> we'll move it. Um, oh, Kelly, I'm using my eraser. That looks pretty well spaced to me. So I, sometimes I just like to give myself a little guide so I know where I'm going and that's okay if you don't want to do that and it's okay if you do want to do that. So I'm just gonna give myself another one and these do not have to be perfect, friends. Just have a little bit of fun. You know, these are your designs. It's gonna be your Zentangle. Um, so have a little bit of fun with it. All right, so our next step, what we're gonna do, and this is similar to our Hollabaugh pattern that we did um, as well as our <laughs> vertigo that <laughs> I'm showing you that we did yesterday. So if you weren't here yesterday, um, any line, our first line that we added, and I'll point them out to you quickly, uh, these three here, oh, four, there's one there. One, two, three, four. Um, every other line that we added after that line went behind it. Um, so this is similar for the squid. Any uh, flower petal, if you will, that we add will always go behind the first six that we did. So the first six are always on top, okay? So I think what we'll do, let's start one here. And then we'll go behind that first one that we drew and we'll bring it back down. All right, everyone okay so far? I wish I had you in class so I could see faces. Someday, someday soon. So what we'll do, we're gonna do another one and I might bring it up behind this flower again or this petal. Don't worry about these little things. You know, we can go clean them up when we're doing, you know, our, our final touches. I'm going to just bring another one out here. I need, I need something there. I think it's important to, you know, work your way around. Maybe we'll do one here, just a little bit of a curve. And then another one here that curves just like the one that we did, but it'll go under this leaf here. And we're gonna keep going around. Um, I'm gonna bring another one down and cross over. And then I'm gonna come up in between our last two original ones that we did. And I think I'm just gonna add another one in there. Okay, so from at this point, what I would recommend is just go through and see where you need something. Um, I'm gonna say, I need something here. So I'm gonna bring one out. And up. And I might just throw one here. Just a little one. And maybe I'm gonna see it carry down through here. Okay, I think I'll do another one here and carry it over partially. 
and then I'll bring it back down through here. And we do need one here. And maybe we'll pretend one's coming out through here and back through. Now, I still have some spaces that need filled and that's okay. We have a little trick for you. Here's what we're gonna do. We learned um, tipple a long time ago. As a matter of fact, I think it was one of our first designs. Here's an example of um, tipple, and here's a better example of strings. Um, I created these strings to give us these curved patterns. You don't necessarily see them there, but the tangle patterns, um, you know, follow that string. So you can do, we're going to do tipple to fill in the rest of our design here. So just go through. And you can fill in spaces. You don't have to fill it the whole way, or you could bring it out, you know, to a certain extent. Maybe I'll stop there. Throw in a couple. So wherever you have a negative space that you think you need to fill in, uh, go in and fill in with with tipple. I like to be, you know, a little, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, inconsistent with these. I mean, I like them placed around, but maybe in some areas they come out a little farther than they do in others. Or, you know, maybe you just have one little dot um, as opposed to you know multiples just depends on on where they fit um, and I have a really good example for that this is the quickest half hour of my day guys um, so this was one that I was working on last night I've been working on it back and forth I shared it I think off and on with you guys for different reasons but um here is uh the, an example of using tipple as a background filler and it worked really well to fill in uh, through here because I had so much negative space but I needed something uh, to fill it and give it a little more interest uh, but when I got up to the top I kind of stopped it but you see I slowly kind of faded them out and even on the side just to give it a little interest you know I didn't keep it going straight up and down um, I kind of gave them little peaks if you will just to keep it a little interesting so that's you know what you could do with the squid um, tangle but you know another thing that you can do if anybody has watercolor mine's dry excuse the noise for a second um, if anybody has any watercolors you could paint the background a certain color. Mine's still a little damp yet. Um, I just took some quick greens before we got started. And um, if you have construction paper, uh, construction paper will work too. So what I'm challenging you to do today is create. You have to pardon me. I'm going to draw in. I'm going to draw in a border quick. And you don't have to draw in a border all the time. I'm just going to draw in a quick one. Um, and I'm going to pause here. I'm not good on the fly some days. Here, this is what we'll do. So I challenge you to try some colored paper. Get that out of the way here. Again, it can be construction paper if you have watercolors. You can experiment. Um, I use three shades of green here. So I'll do our pepper. But you can experiment with different color paper if you don't have, you know, colored pencils. 
or markers or anything to experiment with and you're unable to get them. Um, maybe you're an art teacher, hint, hint, <laughs> and uh, you got some colored paper laying around. Or if you got markers, you can turn markers into a watercolor. We have a video about that on our YouTube channel. Um, as a matter of fact, here, we'll go throw that one in. So maybe you just experiment on you know, some watercolor paper or paper. Um, I know it would be interesting. You could even maybe try some newspaper text and draw over that, especially if you're using um, these micron pens. But, you know, look at the nice contrast there with the green and that black. Uh, maybe you give yourself, you know, a shape that you want to fill in. What would be really cool is if I did all red and then maybe I did my apple, you know, over red with, you know, black designs. Or maybe I could do a green apple. Uh, you know, there's many ways you could take this and have some fun with it. But I just want you guys to experiment and I want to give you options on, you know, what to do to, or what you can do with these. Uh, it's just more than doodling on paper, you know, you can create nice little works of art with them. So on that note, be sure to follow our Facebook pages. We all have different various activities going on. Uh, so if you feel like learning a new maybe a new art form or brushing up on something that you haven't done in a while. You know, feel free to hop on. Sam of Bedford does something different every day at one o'clock. Sam El Tuna is Tuesdays and Thursdays at two. Um, and Ligonier, I don't know that they have a time schedule, but they have a really cool uh, photography class going on right now from Kelly Corsi Gray. And she's offering different tips and tricks on, you know, taking, uh, good cell, good pictures with your cell phone. And they also have a really wonderful artist interviews at Sam Ligonier. Maybe you're interested in uh, being one of our artists. Feel free to, you know, email us or reach out. But just know that we're all offering different activities for you. Uh, all levels welcome, beginners, intermediate, expert, you know, just jump on and have a little bit of fun and show us what you're creating. But on that note... Um, my dogs are telling me it is very close to dinner time, which means I've held you long enough. Um, I am Jess Campbell. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend, and I will hopefully catch you all on Monday.